That's a bunker. War time. It's for the war. You're throwing bombs. You hop up in there. And how you make it. Look at these beautiful colors. It's like a set. It's like a movie set. That's the water catchment. We own rainwater, so we catch all the rainwater here, which it rains a lot of. And we collect it in this big water catchment. And then from there, we, we distribute it to the space, to the cabin, to the main house, to this cabin. And so we, we're on completely off-grid here, like completely off-grid. This is one of the cabins. This is another one. This is the main house right here. And then check it out. Look at these. These are real batteries right here. This is the real deal right here. These solar, these store the solar energy from the sun to use. So this is like for real off grid right here. These are the Tesla batteries. And we got the panels on top of the roof, right? And so those are collecting the sunlight. And then that's being stored in these batteries and then being redistributed to the whole property. And we, are, we also have, do have propane. So <clears throat> that's what we use for like the, to dry the clothes, like the, you know, the, the, some of the stoves use it and the dryer as well. What are the electricity meters for? Well, I know th th this uh, place has a capacity to run off uh, the... So this is like the whole system. People think solar is just like a simple, like the solar panels, it's a whole system that goes along with it. You need the panels, you need the batteries, you need the converters. So this is what that's for. And also we can get some power from the power companies, but we don't, you know, because we got the solar, but it's a whole system that you need. It's not just a simple, especially if you run a lot of power, if you run a lot of electronics, you really need a good system to actually run all that. Like a little portable system isn't, isn't going to do much, especially like for something like a refrigerator and things like that. Like that's, that requires a lot of power. So you have to have like a real legit setup with some big batteries that can actually have the capacity to power all those electronics. There's a garden that I've been tending to. A lot of flowers. I like these little things right here. I don't know what they are, but they're like the flower of that plant. This is an orange tree right here. You got some oranges on it. Not ready yet, but we're getting there. Lots of flowers. All these are banana trees right here, or the banana plant. It's not a tree, but I guess everybody calls it a tree. Um, yeah, let's see. I mean, I don't know if the signal will reach over there. We got more flowers. We got this little patio area. Oh, we got a little fish pond. Let me show you the fish. Fishes. Here's the front of the property. We got some goldfish right here. Put these uh, to try to keep the mosquitoes down because they'll eat the mosquito larva so that there won't be as many mosquitoes but i think really the best thing you could do to deter mosquitoes is to just keep the place clean and just keep leaves off of the ground that's probably the best thing got this little bouquet right here so it looks nice you know for the guests when the guests come i like to have fresh flowers and stuff around just to make it feel better you know give it a better feel more lively feel oh check this out okay so 
there's this mush there's this meme on the internet right that i seen about a mushroom it was a um, it was talking about that there was a mushroom that can make women orgasm and i was like what that's crazy right um so i started doing research about it and then come to find out this mushroom this, this supposed orgasm given mushroom is actually found in in hawaii and even more on the big island where we're at right so i was like what that's crazy and it's supposed to be like a rare variety of mushroom so then one day i'm walking around the garden and guess what i run into that mushroom that they're talking about because i've seen pictures of it and i'm like what that's crazy um then they they have i don't know if it's true or not you know i'm not a woman so i can't test that but it has a very distinct smell um and this right here actually let me show it to you it's an amazing looking thing and this mushroom is touted to be able to induce orgasm in a woman that is what the article said right so i'm like that's crazy that's what they're talking about supposedly they did a study on it but it's so it has a very strong smell like very strong and it smells like semen basically like it really does like it has a very <laughs> distinct smell like that and it's just crazy because it's supposed to be super rare but it's growing right here on the property and they always pop up like this one might pop up for like a day or two and then it dies um and then and then it'll grow yeah it does look like a penis uh, that's the shape that it has and then it has like that orange netting around it um but the smell is very distinct mine is is just pretty much it smells like semen and so i thought that was crazy you know it's really interesting because it's supposed to be rare i might just bottle that up and sell it for like 500 bucks <laughs> but yeah i thought that was rare because usually they'd be growing over here um and so sometimes they just die and then they'll come back but if you know anything about mushrooms you know there's a mycelium network that goes under the ground so our network that we can't see but that's the mycelium network and then they pop up on but it's all connected it's all like the same being and that's what like, these things are it's an african tree right here this is a medicinal plant the baboons like to eat it but it's funny because before i found that out i would look at this tree and i would always imagine like monkeys on it for some reason like i would feel like there's supposed to be monkeys on there just naturally the tree would give me that vibe and then i read that the monkeys actually do like to eat that you know and so i was i thought that was amazing uh check it out they got this rack of bananas i've been waiting on this one for a minute i always uh come and look at it and see if it's ripe because these things one day it'll won't be ripe and the next day it'll be booming and then you know if you miss it the bugs and stuff will get to it so you got to be on it but that's how nature is nature is opportunistic you know people say like we're supposed to be eating fruit but like look at all this fruit um, if you don't eat it, something else is going to eat it. Like, uh, nature, in nature, things are going to eat what they have access to. Not, they're not going on a specific rule diet. Like, if they have access to it and they can consume it and they have the capacity to digest it and use it for energy, it's going to take it. That's rule number one for sure. There's no doubt about that because I observed that, you know. So, like, if, 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 if every species had their food, that means that that would never break down. Like, like if that was our fruit only, then that um, that banana would never be broken down until until we came in and ate it because no other species or bug or anything else would would, would want to take it, right? Like, but there is. There's always something like this guava. You can't get to this guava quick enough because these damn flies is gonna lay lay their eggs in there, the larvae, you know. But I I had a branch that fell, so I had to. Uh, cut it and all the fruit fell off a lot of it was premature because i think it got too heavy so the branch just basically snapped but i'm repurposing that branch because it was a big ass branch and i'm i'm actually making a, a bow out of it so i'm right now i'm letting the wood dry but here's that fruit I, these things just look dope <laughs> it's like a hanging fruit but you got to be careful because this should have land on your head look at the spider whale i don't know if you can see it
Yeah, but these things are huge. This is an African tree, like I said, and this is more of a medicinal plant. It's not really like a something you just eat, but it's like a big ass thing, and you just it's hard. And they fall on the ground. Let me stand not underneath that. <laughs> Let me see what else we got over here. Oh, we got another rack right there. That one's a little younger, so it's going to take a little more time. But it's got the flower. I usually clip it off, but I haven't clipped off this one because you're supposed to clip it to get more of that nutrition. Uh, because the flower, they say, takes away some of the nutrition from the banana. So if you cut that off, it'll, it'll get better tasting bananas or whatnot. Yeah, this is the front, the side of the garden. We got some papaya trees. We ain't got none on it right now, but these are. You see this? Right? That's a that's that's from Madagascar. Those are from Madagascar. So they imported those. Actually, a lot of the. I mean, a lot of stuff is imported here in Hawaii. Like humans, we traffic plants and animals throughout the whole world. You know, like we change the landscape, and that's one of the things that's unique about us that we have the ability to transform and change the landscape sometimes for better sometimes for worse but that's what sets us apart from i think other animals that we can do that with our consciousness and with our bodies and with our evolved brains um, this is a palm tree but it's, it's not it's not really giving fruit i mean it is giving fruit but the fruit is no good so I got to figure out, I got to it, give it some seawater and give it some minerals so that it could produce some coconuts that are actually edible. But as right now, it's not really doing that. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. I mean, we have a lot more in the back, but I don't know what these things are, but they look cool. It's got some palms right here. I always got coconuts around. These, oh, I need to get rid of these. I just uh, kind of remodeled this place. I painted the ceiling, the floor, the walls, all the walls. It kind of rearranges it. But this is uh, the new place that we're renting out. Um, this is uh, one of the Airbnb units that we rent out. Still haven't rented it out, but we just fix it up to rent it out to somebody or to Airbnb, I should say. Hey, hey, peace, Echo. Yeah, um, yeah, I had, somebody had told me that a while back and I always remembered that. So I, I started doing that. Let me see if, uh, if it'll reach. Yeah, we got banana racks going off everywhere. See, we got one right there, right off the house. And another one right there is actually ripe, but we have so many bananas right now. Like I don't even want to, I don't even want to get them because <laughs> we just have so many. Like we're not gonna be able to eat them all. This this is a really good papaya tree that always gives a lot of fruit. Right there is avocado, aguacate in Spanish. Let me go back the other way because I think the internet is gonna cut off. Yeah, so I, I, I probably can go live later to give a class on food. I want to talk about food and nutrition and what is food and what's the proper food for humans and why. And then like the spiritual aspect of it, how we look at food spiritually, you know, I want to talk about that. I feel like that's important. Nice flowers are here. That's called the Bougainvillea. These tree right here, this is another palm. Now, I don't know if people know, but there's a palm trees are, they're not really trees. This is palms. There's a whole different variety of plant. But they're palms. This is, a, there's not just one palm tree. There's many different varieties of palm. There's a coconut palm. This is another type of palm that produces these nuts right here. And these nuts actually have um, a chemical compound in them that is a stimulant. So the Pacific Islanders, what they'll do is they'll chew on it 
and basically get that juice out of it and they'll get like a high like cocaine type of high it's more of a stimulant high and so a lot of them get hooked on this type of shit and they actually their teeth will rot and stuff like that but this is what, what produces it this palm right here and, and they're all over the floor right here this is like the ones that that um it's called the beetle nut if you look it up it's called the beetle nut but these are ones that are really past ripe and just kind of fell on the ground but if you get them green like that that's how they get them and then they have a whole process they mix it with like some lime to be it's like a cold process to it i don't know how they figured it out but they be getting lit off of that shit. Never tried it myself, but um, yeah. So, oh yeah, there's another palm too that produces a, a different type of fruit that's similar to a coconut. Uh, if people don't know about it, it's called palmyra palm. Um, and that palms are so useful, like these fronds. I know people call them the leaves, but you could actually use the, the fronds to make baskets, to weave baskets, to weave a bag, to weave like a bowl, different things you could weave these things with. You gotta get the young leaves though and you gotta actually climb the tree to get it. You can't get the old ones. Um, it's it's a uh, art. I've seen people do it like online and it's to climb a tree like it's a skill and then to get up there and then have the knowledge to be able to weave that basket. It's like, it amazes me because they had it down to a science. Like, and the baskets come out really nice. Like they look, proper like they look like it was made to make a basket with but you know the human ingenuity is just amazing we have some stuff right here uh kind of we have some basil yeah i can't show like that spot right there because it's with the bunker like the signals in the red house and the bunkers in the middle so I, when i get on that side it's like it loses signal from the wi-fi but um Oh, right here we we're in Pahoa, Pahoa, Hawaii, on a big island, and um, yeah, this is where, this is where I'm at right now. This is a jackfruit tree, by the way. It got no fruit on it. It hasn't fruited yet, or it's, it's tried to fruit, but it just hasn't been able to. Like, it's it's some some stuff you got to know about when it comes to uh when it comes to gardening and growing food. It's it's not always as simple as just planting in the ground. Like I will say the tropics is a more favorable place to grow food, but you still have to tend to the land. You still have to uh, be conscious and aware of the food and you have to check up on it and you have to weed it and you have to give it what it needs, you know, to grow, if you want to grow good food, otherwise it's just a hit and miss, you know. Damn, I wish I could show the cacao trees because there's some beautiful cacao that is uh, growing and it's giving fruit right now. But you know what? I'm actually gonna do a video, like a whole tour of the property video so you can see, because we never did that uh, for some reason, but I got some cacao growing over here and, and it's in different stages. So it'll be like the whole fruit that's like ready to eat. And then it'll be like smaller ones. It'll be ones that didn't make it and there'll be flowers. So because Hawaii has all the little bugs, they're called midges that pollinate the cacao, it's always year round giving fruit. Other places, they don't have them all. They don't have as many, so they only fruit once or twice a year. But here, basically, the cacao is like fruits year round. So I want to show you that, but it's, it's down there and the signal's not going to reach. So I have to do a pre-record. And we also got some avocados and some other fruits down there that uh, I wanted to share with y'all. But yeah, it's, it's, um, when it comes to food, it's, it's a really... When you look out into nature and you observe like the animals and even people who live really in, in the bush and in nature like life kind of revolves around getting food because we don't have access like not having access to a grocery store or a farmer's market like you have to dedicate the large portion of your day to getting food and to getting sustenance that thing that sustains your life you know so that's why food is so embedded in us and and when we change how we, how we eat it changes our life because Food is really important to human beings. It's important to anything that's alive because you need food to sustain life, you know? Uh, I mean, I know you hear a lot about breatharians and people and I went down that route and stuff, but that's not the reality for most of us, you know? That's not the reality that most of us experience, you know? And I do believe, you know, we all have to go through a process of cleansing and a process of really being aware of what we're eating and putting our conscious thought on it, like not just putting stuff in our body because it's there and because it's familiar, but actually questioning 
and being conscious of the things we put in our body, like that's without a doubt. I feel like everybody's got to go through that process of just recalibrating this organism, this machine to, to know what to put into it. But I think after that is when people, when, it, when there's difference of opinion, like, you know, people, and everything serves a purpose. This, this is what I understood, have understood throughout my journey because I've been stricter than most people that you will probably receive advice from on nutrition. Like I've really put my body and my myself on the line as, as like a dummy, a test dummy for for diet, for, for you know, fasting, for just different ways of eating and living. Like I, I've really put myself through it enough to know what it represents and why that, uh, you know, that's necessary in certain circumstances. So everything has a purpose. So when I see people, uh, you know, stuck on that, it reminds me of, or stuck on a certain way of eating, it reminds me of, of where I came from and how hard I was on being raw to the point where, like if I had a piece of, of cooked food, like I, I mentally, it it was like I was gonna die. Like it was mentally like I was failing at life if I ate anything cooked. I, I never did throughout that. I was so strict that, but that's just how I looked at it. Like if I ate something that was cooked, like I was losing my soul. That's how I felt. And so I know the psychology behind food and how we can take in a ideology or belief system to the point where it clouds our vision of reality or us experiencing reality because we're so caught up in that, that that's what we're living through. We're not really living through reality or what is. And that's why I, th I look up to uh, tribal people because they're not creating philosophies on life. They are experiencing life. Like life, they're living it. They are life being expressed they don't have time like we have a lot of time to sit down and create philosophies because we don't have to worry about food no more we took that out of the equation now um we have enough food in the grocery stores and in farmers markets to be able to kind of sit down and just play a lot and play around with life and philosophize and people become gurus and and teachers but back in the day like in the original in the nature and in a place of, of primitive or primal existence Everybody was doing something and occupied with survival. That was life. It wasn't like, like we're dying, like we need to survive. Like, but it was just like everybody's got to go for the hunt or go pick. The women are doing this and doing that. You didn't have time to really, uh, you know, create anything like that in your mind because you were so busy living life that you didn't have to live it in your mind. You lived it and expressed it through in your reality. You know, you you knew the plants. You were familiar with the plants. You had a relationship with the land to the point because it was like an extension of you. It was a, like a network that was connecting everything. You you knew if I picked all those fruit on that tree, that that might not be good, that you might want to leave some fruit or, you know, not do damage to that tree because you're going to have to come back to it next year. And it's just like certain things like that. Like uh, Native Americans, they sometimes will fish a, a lake one year and not come back to it for like a whole decade or 10 or 20 years later because they will give the population, the fish population enough time to come back and replenish itself, you know? So that's what I'm talking about. But when we lose that connection to our, what sustains our life, we lose touch of reality. And when we lose touch of reality, we operate from something other than what's original, what's meant to be, was the most high God essence that you could ever dream of you know so that's why there's a lot of dispute and um controversy in in the in the conscious community in the diet community because nobody's most people aren't having to live really live and embrace what they what they teach or what they are out there promoting you know most of the time it's like that's just something you believe in and something that you philosophize and think about, but it's not something organically that you live every single day on, on that information. It's, it's for most people, it's not like that. Like, and when you do have to go take that plunge, you realize that your philosophy quickly crumbles. Like it kind of dissipates and dissolves and, and then you kind of get a reality check. Like if you, if you are vegan and you have to grow your own food, like you might get a reality check where it's like, damn, like, I, don't, I don't know. This is daunting. Like, I don't know. There's a lot of resistance here because I've limited and boxed myself in, you know, and I created this ideology in my mind that's not fitting to reality. So I might have to come back and adjust and be willing to connect with nature, be willing to, open myself up to to what is 
to to reality and what that looks like and not have this uh thing in my mind that i feel like it's a blockage but i created that blockage within myself not because it's bad or it's evil like i created that within myself that i didn't want to eat cooked food not because eating cooked food is bad but because i sold myself uh ideology that eating cooked food was bad so the point where i was scared to eat some cooked food i was i was literally like like nah i can't eat that like that like like i would feel like i wasn't pure i wasn't living up to a certain standard you know so I'm, I'm just trying to get you to understand how the human psychology can develop a way of thinking that is not conducive or in, even in line with reality. You know, so I have to like check myself a lot of times because I have a tendency to do that. I've seen myself do that in the past and I'm I'm like the biggest purist there is. Like I, when I do something, I want to do it pure and I, and I really want to go hard and and not you know, uh, compromise at all. So I know why people do that. I understand why people do that because I've done it and I do it sometimes still, you know. So it's just gaining a different understanding of the world, you know. And really what it is, is accepting what you see and what you experience and what is rather than trying to make what is fit what you believe. You know, you have to like be willing to let go of anything you believe and what you experience to be be willing to live that. If you want to be in tune with nature, if you want to be in tune with the all, with the primal, you know, creative force that, that exists all around you, you have to be willing like that, you know. And you can't have go out there with your own beliefs because we come from a domesticated system. We come from a system that's, that, that taught us a certain way. So that conditioning still exists in us, you know. We'll never truly be able to be wild because... We already were domesticated. When a plant or an animal is domesticated and it makes it back out to the wild, it, it's not wild anymore. It's called feral. That's to that's that's to give a definition between what was once domesticated and what was never domesticated. Like uncontacted tribe. Like that's wild. Like they're really wild. Like they're not domesticated. Not one a year or one day of their life where they institutionalized to believe certain things by the system that we live in. So they're they're wild. Like they, they can't you can't um take that away from them, but you can never apply that label to us because we already know we have in our memory the experiences and the knowledge and information of, of a uh a domesticated system, right? That that taught us a lot of things that we're having to go and deprogram and reprogram from and learn new ways, but still that's still part of who we are as this beings that we are now you can go and create something else but you know raise a family you know that is not exposed to that system but us that are listening right now like we are all been indoctrinated domesticated and programmed to think a certain way so and we continue to be with social media with the news it's all creation of domesticated people so it's like it's all crazy people People who are misguided, disconnected from source, trying to tell each other what that is, trying to school each other on what that is. Even me, like even right now, I'm coming up with these philosophies or or I'm resonating with these philosophies and I'm making sense of them and, and, and sharing them with people. But even then, it's like I don't really know what nature really is. Like I haven't really lived out there and, and been out there long enough to be able to give you a uh, a sound perfect grounded perspective on it you know damn that should just feel hard so um you know so even then like i have to you know express that because i'm not exempt from what i'm talking about you know that's why i'm let me see let me see these questions real quick would you recommend a water fast or any type of fast to get rid of food addiction um if you're resonating with that um then, you know, I, I will give it a try if that's something that you resonated with. Because, like I said, I've been there. I fasted many times for 40 days on just water. I fasted twice, actually. Not I should say many times, but then other times for like 26 days, other times for two weeks, other times for five days, other times for three days. It's just like, I can't box that up. You know, it's just different seasons of your life will call for different things. And whatever you feel is appropriate, whatever you're gravitating towards, that's what I would um, encourage you to tune into. You know, I can't say that give you a one size fits all universal, you know, 
uh, prescription for everybody because everybody's different. Everybody's going through different things. But I think that that can be um, important and that can be useful for people because we disconnect ourselves from, from food. It kind of makes you zone in and focus in on yourself and why you even gravitate to food to kind of distract yourself, right? You distract, we distract ourselves with food when things are going bad, people run to food when things are going good, like people run to food and it's like it enhances or just kind of stimulates us to feel good, but then you always gotta come down after that and realize like, did I really get to the issue or did I just merely try to cover that up? So when you're fasting, it's like it creates an environment for you to be able to face yourself on a deeper level without the distractions you know and it'll be still be distractions in your mind like you'll be dreaming about food that's what i realized when i was fasting is like the body's obsessed with food it's just it's just wants food even after many cleanses and stuff and thinking that i was cleansed because we're always trying to reach a certain level of purity right um i still have the cravings you know if i fast right now i'm still gonna have cravings for food uh just just any type of food it could be fruit it could be some juice, you know. When I was dry fasting with no water, I just fucking have dreams of water. All I wanted was some water. So it's just different levels of density is how I look at it. You have pretty dense foods and then you have less dense foods. So that's that's just the order of things. That's a whole different download, you know, but that's just, that's the basics of it. Resilient and brilliant as are you going back to carbonation? No, I'm not going back to carbonation. I never said I was going back to carbonation. Um, so people, I know that's the number one thing on people's mind besides knowledge and understanding of the world around them and themselves. Is, but I get it because we're all human. We're all sharing this human experience and it's kind of become a personal thing to be connected to this whole uh, movement and this you know, TV drama, the reality show is going on. So I get it, you know, it's, it's entertaining, but that's not what's important. What's important is that you focus on knowing and understanding yourself, you know, and, and just really hone in on that because that's really what's important. That's going to get you what you need to go, where you're supposed to be at. If you understand yourself, it don't matter. Like, you'll find where you fit in in the world because you'll be expressing what you are and naturally everything's going to piece itself together and you'll gravitate the people in the situations you know that you need to gravitate to yeah so that's it no more questions i'll see y'all later um like i said I'll pro i'm gonna do a i want to do a download about food later on today probably or sometime hopefully i have time gotta you know handle some stuff with airbnb but Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the Kickstarter, you know, I, I want to talk about that real quick. Um, yeah, I'm making an album. I, I, I want to put together some music and, and make an album that's going to be like more tribal hip hop, but just kind of uh, talking about my experiences of what I've gone through so far. And um, just putting that on some beats, on some music, some lyrics, and just putting some consciousness in there. And so I got a Kickstarter to... Uh, to help raise some money for some, uh, like a mobile studio basically, so I can keep making music, and I could keep editing videos, make music videos, and I wanna do all that. Like, I just love creating content. That's why I put on my bio, I'm a digital creator because I create digital content, you know? And that's one of the things I like to do, and music is a great avenue to express that, and Hawaii has some beautiful locations that I would love to shoot some music videos in. So I'm hoping that, you know, that I can gain some, some some funding for that. Even if I don't, you know, I'm still gonna try to make it, you know, one way or another. Like it's it's just, I'm putting it out there to the universe uh, and in my reality, if anybody resonates with that, wanna help me build that and become a part of that, you know, the link is in my bio and you can help me with the Kickstarter. And so it's gonna be dope though. I look forward to that. And I, I was thinking like, I wanna record outside. Like I wanna do different things. Like I wanna incorporate things that have never really been done. Because when you think of uh, making music and recording, it's always like in the city, in a, some studio, in some, you know, some place that's like, you know, super uh, Babylon out for better words of, you know, just like city life. You know, you don't think of like people recording in the jungle or in the woods or like with the natural ambiance of 
of this surrounding, you know, I think that would be dope, you know, if, if you can do that. But there's a lot of interference with the wind sometimes. So I don't know. I just, but I've been thinking about what ideas about how to make it, put that natural touch on it, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I look forward to that. So with that being said, I'll come back and teach some some stuff that's important and focus on that. Hopefully you can uh, stay focused on that and find that center balance point and stay there. Always come back to balance. All right, I'll see you guys next time.